Okay, let's continue where we left off. Now, this grid is basically on a square, but we want it to be on a circle. So let's adjust our code to do that. Let's move this call into a separate variable. Now, let me explain what I'm doing here. We are basically calculating how big this vector is. And the distance is calculated from the center of the scene. We can consider this number as the radius of a circle. And if the radius is bigger than 16, then we are going to skip this hexagon and continue with the loop. By doing that, we are effectively creating a circle of hexagons. If you think about it, what we're doing here is saying that when this tile is outside the circle, whose radius is 16, then we don't want this tile to be part of our geometries. So we are skipping this tile uh, from the rest of the loop and we're continuing basically. Let's bump up these numbers a little bit and let's check our scene again now. It's not a perfect circle, but it will do for our purposes. Now we are really going to have fun. Let's go up here and import a new library. Let's add simplex noise with Skypack. Now let's instantiate the simplex noise and let's use it here. Let's change this magic number with a new one like that. And let's use the original camera that we committed out before. And take a look at what we have now. I bet you are really confused. What the hell happened? So let me go over what we did and let explain a little bit what the simplex noise uh, library is doing and how we are recreating this amazing scene. Now, it would take me way too long to explain to you how this picture has been generated with simplex noise, but let's simplify things a bit and explain to you what, what is practically happening when you call the simplex noise function. Let's imagine that this is our coordinate system. You can pass two values to the simplex noise function, the x and y. So for example, let's assume that we are passing this point to the noise function. We're going to get this value, which is encoded in gray in this picture, which is probably around 0 0.5 for the sample that I chose. As you move around in the simplex space, you realize that the value of the function, which in this case is encoded in a grayscale color, is going to smoothly vary across the space that we're in. So for example, if we move in this direction, then we are eventually going to get a much brighter value, which corresponds to a number like 0 0.9, for example. If we move a little bit more in the y direction, eventually we'll get to the point where we have a variation like that, but we eventually move from a high number to a small one, which is encoded in black. This would be, for example, 0 0.2. And what we are practically doing in code is to scale down a little bit the tile position, which is encoded in i and j. And then we're making sure that the result of the noise function is a number between 0 and 1 by adding this normalization factor. You could remove the, this exponential term over here, but I decided to keep it because it's going to keep our mountains a little bit steeper. I would advise you to play with this number a little bit and see what happens when you do that. Now let's move this number here into its own ma magic constant, which we are going to call max height. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the output of this function is a number between minus 1 and plus 1, which is why the normalization factor, factor is necessary, so that we can remap this value, which is between minus 1 and 1, to 0 and 1. I think I'll keep this video short, and I will stop it here. We did a lot of stuff, and in the next one, we're going to add some colors to this beautiful scene here, and a little bit of rendering magic with some textures, some lights, etc. Having that said, see you on the next video.